large pink ribbon inside her home for three years. But not everybody was happy. Cart was shocked when she received a letter from the Homeowners Association to remove the ribbon. You know, homeowners associations, most of them aren't that bad that I've experienced, but some of them get power freaks involved who enjoy dominating everyone, and they'll do this kind of stuff. They say, we don't want to see that out your window, you know, through your window. But, but again, why not have a ribbon that says, we know the New World Order is killing us? We, we know the government's poisoning us. We know there's a eugenics operation. We need to come up with some symbolism like that, and then we can all just identify. Maybe an upside-down flag that in the white stripes has little messages that says there is a program to poison the population. There is a po program to impoverish the population. There is a program to destroy the family. There is a program to bring in world government, and it's run by the large central banks like the Federal Reserve here in the United States. And until we identify that enemy, we have no future. America and the world is occupied by the new world order. They are the enemy. Discover the enemy or perish. And you stick the upside down flag on everything. And people go up and read what's in the messages. And then others can add what they think the problem is in the emergency message. And then that can spread. There. If you go out and do it, it'll be a great victory against the enemy. Will it bring them down? No. But the act of resistance and truth will. You need to understand, ladies and gentlemen, this is serious. And we need to combat it at every level. All right, let me get into the situation in Russia. The toll-free number is 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. And when I go to you at the bottom of the hour, I'm not going to make you sit there and hold. I'm going to go to you. In fact, John Harmon, this is an order. You are, just today as a test, to fade me down if I try to talk during a 60-second period. We will let the person talk for 60 seconds, and they will be hung up on Regardless of how important their information is, that's how we'll get to a bunch of calls. Sounds good. And then I will have 15 seconds to respond. And we'll move to the next person. This will be a day long remembered. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, get into the Russia situation. Well, here's the arrogant mobster criminal, uh, Joe Biden. Russia is alone, naked in front of the entire world. No, you are, you criminal leech. There's another one. Biden in Europe to reassure our allies over Russia's moves in Ukraine. Washington Post, folks, folks, Russia took less than 10% of the country that historically has been part of Russia. I know you know that. I know you know that. But... Notice the hoax calling the media calling Obama weak and the neocons calling Obama weak. The globalist with neocon help and NATO help just took 90 plus percent of the country and put their regime that will now join the EU for looting. They voted to not join the EU. Now they're going to have a Marshall Plan emergency aid signing them onto the debt. The EU just took 90 plus percent of the country. Russia came in to grab their bases and gas pipelines and they're calling it a victory for Putin. So he can then strut around in his gold palace, when in truth, this is a major defeat for Russia. That's spin for you. And then Israel and the neocons give right-wing support and cover to Obama, who's on the exact same team. That's the rest of the story. Good day. We're going to skip this network break. This is too important. I've got to cover this story now. Ron Paul. I'm going to read this whole article out of USA Today because it says it all, very measured, very reasonable, what I've been saying for weeks. In USA Today, Ron Paul, Crimea secedes. So what? Residents of Crimea voted over the weekend on whether they would remain an autonomous region of the Ukraine or join the Russian Federation. In doing so, they joined a number of countries and regions, including recently Scotland, Catalonia, and Venice. They are seeking to secede from what they view as an unresponsive or repressive government's by 96.77%. The latter three are proceeding without much notice, while overwhelmingly Crimea vote to secede from Ukraine has incensed the U.S. and European Union officials, who are run by globalist banks, I should add, and has led NATO closer to conflict with Russia in any time since the height of the Cold War. What's the big deal? 
Ron Paul goes on to say, opponents of the Crimea vote like to point to the legality of the referendum. But self-determination is a centerpiece of international law. Article 1 of the United Nations Charter points out clearly that the purpose of the UN is to develop friendly relations among nations based on respect for the principle of equal rights and self-determination of peoples. Why does the U.S. care which flag will be hoisted on a small piece of land thousands of miles away? It's 8,000 miles away, technically. Critics point to the Russian occupation of Crimea as evidence that no fair vote could have taken place. Where were these people when an election held in Iraq occupied by U.S. troops was called a triumph of democracy? Perhaps the U.S. officials who supported the unconstitutional overthrow of Ukraine's government should refocus their energies on learning our own constitution, which does not allow the government to overthrow governments overseas or spend a billion dollars to bail out Ukraine and its international creditors. Though the Obama administration applied some minimal sanctions on selected Russian and Crimean individuals, neither the U.S. nor the EU can afford significant sanctions against Russia. Global trade provides too much economic benefit to both sides. Indeed, Paul continued to wrote, international markets rallied on news that the sanctions would be thus far minimal. They understand that trade and economic engagement are the surest roads to peace and prosperity. Let's hope governments will follow their lead. From the Ron Paul Institute, stories also at Infowars.com. We carry all the Ron Paul Institute information, or most of it. Now, how do you spin that? We cannot believe how weak Obama is. He only backed taking over 90 plus percent of the country and seizing it and firebombing the police stations and shooting people and overthrowing elected government. And, uh, I mean, how dare Obama be weak on Syria over the last three years, blowing up hundreds and hundreds of churches every month, murdering Christians and others in mass, funding al-Qaeda 200,000 strong to attack the country, and now we want an Air Force bombardment and total invasion of a country that did nothing. I mean, how weak of Obama. Give him nine more peace prizes. I mean, how weak of him shining the Obamacare Act, written by Ezekiel Emanuel and the Republican Party and Democratic Party with the offshore mega banks. How dare him do that? How dare him, uh, you know, double and triple the prices for the foreign banks? How dare him build more abortion clinics in the black neighborhoods the New World Order wants to kill? How dare him try to disarm the American people when the big banks are the ones financing that? How dare him invade six different African countries in the last seven years? or six years or whatever it is. How dare him use al-Qaeda to bring down Libya? How dare him uh, just absolutely sign on to a billion dollars in aid that will be used for the military? How dare him back NATO arming Ukrainian troops, massing in Ukraine right now, in Ukraine, refusing to leave, saying, quote, they will battle the Russians for it? How dare him? He is weak, ladies and gentlemen. He's just totally bringing down the U.S., raping everybody of their finances, turning us over to the New World Order, and then they've got all these people running around, jumping up and down, saying he's weak. And then it's like some kind of, you know, we're scoring when Krauthammer, who was good on a lot of subjects, comes out and says, yeah, Obama looks real weak. Uh, Dick Cheney says, uh, you know, he's real weak. <laughs> Man, Putin's really showing us right now. I mean, we just grabbed 90 plus percent of a country full of oil and pipelines and grain, and we're going to suck it dry right now. I mean, I tell you, that's, Hitler got half of Poland. You know, we would have got 90 percent. <laughs> that's how you game people. That's how you take over right there. And the public buys it. Yeah, Putin's really tough. He's really showing us right now. There's a lot of traitors like Alex Jones and Ron Paul that don't think we should have war with Russia. Yeah, you know those commies, Ron Paul and Alex. Yeah, they, they want to cut taxes down to nothing, get rid of the income tax, uh, uh, give the states most of the power and empower the family and get rid of the Department of Education and uh, arm everybody. <laughs> they love John Wayne and cars that go 200 miles an hour. These are some really communist people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they didn't. folks, you didn't know that I've been accused in literally hundreds of publications of being a KGB agent? Of course, back when I said that our government was funding Al-Qaeda, they had the media claim that I'm a Al-Qaeda sleeper cell person. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I'm, that's why 
There is something the establishment does get, though, and, and I've been told this you know, with, in some high-level meetings. They've actually done their homework. They do this on anybody. You know, just until about 50 years ago, and this is probably discriminatory and a bad thing, but back when America really was run by Americans, you couldn't get a high-level position unless your family had been here back in 1776. That's kind of inclusive, a little bit elitist, isn't it? Of all of it, but if, I, mean, I could go be part of the societies with the elites that were in, you know, from the Mayflower. I could go be part of the uh, you know, sons of the Republic of Texas. My mom could be daughters of the Republic of Texas, grandmothers, grandma is. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm some hoity-toity guy. But, but you, know, you know, the whole point is I'm an American and you get that through your stinking heads. And don't you ever, you scumbag traitors who are, who are sold out to the foreign banks that are gutting this country, don't you ever, ever tell me I work for some foreign government and you know who you are. I dare one of these neocons to get in my face and say that I'll punch you in the nose. You understand that? You ever say that I'm not loyal to this country? Go ahead, punch me in the face. I will stomp your ass into the ground. And I don't mean to talk like this, but I am an American, 110%. And you tell me I'm not a loyal American, I will stomp you into the ground. Do you understand that? I want this country to survive. I love this country. I believe in this country. We were exceptional. And I'm sick of people signing us on to the new world order, to world government, destroying our industry, destroying our country, poisoning our people chemically and culturally. And then you have got the nerve to sit up here and tell me that I'm not an American. You're not an American. You're a piece of trash sold out to the new world order. The neocons, the Democratic Party, all of you are enemies enemies you want to usurp me and you want to usurp my family and you want to usurp everyone and trot them underfoot well i'm not going to sit here and i'm not going to put up with it and that's what it comes down to i am the rightful heir you are the rightful heir we are the rightful heirs of this republic and i don't care if you just got off a boat here if you like the bill of rights and constitution you like freedom you don't want handouts. You don't want to be a slave. You want guns. You want to raise your own children. You don't want to abort 53 million, 54 million babies. Then you are my brother. I don't care what color you are or where you're from. You want freedom? Then you're on the same side as I am. But if you want to be part of gangs and inside scams and all this crud, you're an enemy. But I do see the Russians surrounded, and I do see them being bullied and pushed around, and I see a sovereign country just like America under a New World Order attack. And I do have solidarity with the Russians at that level because they're being attacked by the same pack of wolves that already pulled us down and is eating our guts right now. And they're trying to pull Russia down right now. They had Russia down for 70-plus years, absolutely murdering those people by the tens of millions. And now they want to do that here. You absolutely better believe I'm on fire to not see Russia overrun by the new world order and destroyed. Russia is trying to rebuild itself economically. As Ron Paul said at the end of his article, he says, instead, international markets rallied on news that the sanctions would be thus far minimal. They understand that trade and economic engagement are the surest roads to peace and prosperity. Let's hope governments will follow their lead. I want to compete on ideas and products. And if we beat the Russians in competition, great. You want to have competitions and see American companies in America win contracts? That's great. Then the Russians will buy our products and vice versa. I don't want to be successful in the old, ancient, barbarian, fraudulent, imperial way of just making people slaves. I want to be successful by true competition and true free will, and that's what I stand for. And that's what will build our civilization and give us a future. We have been overrun by the most dishonorable, anti-liberty, anti-human gangs the world could ever imagine. And we are in deep, deep bondage. And we are losing our genetics. They are wrecking human genetics at many levels in an irreversible way that's on record. We are being vandalized. We are being attacked. The globalists are the ultimate criminals to dare attack the virtuous. That's where I stand. Excuse me for saying I'll kick people's butt. It's just a certain point, you know, I dare one of these media people, one of these guys come up and tell me I'm a KGB agent.
Go ahead. You, if I am, come punch me in the nose. I'm going to stomp your head in the ground. I'll show you who the American is, punk. We're on the march.